Good afternoon, and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Philip and our midday meditation on this Thursday, August 27th. I'm Kathy Zappa, one of the clergy at the Cathedral, and today I would like to talk about one of the readings that you will hear this upcoming Sunday. It's one of my favorite passages from Exodus, though admittedly I have many favorite passages from Exodus. This week's is the story of Moses' call at the burning bush. This call story comes in the third chapter of Exodus, and by then so much has already taken place. The baby Moses has been delivered from Pharaoh's genocide, delivered by Yahweh through five courageous women. He's been raised in the house of Pharaoh's daughter, and he has seen his people's oppression at the hands of the Egyptians. One day, in a fit of righteous rage, he killed an Egyptian, and he's had to flee from Egypt to Midian, where he met his wife, Zipporah, and became a shepherd in her father-in-law, Jethro's house. It's one day, while he's out tending his father-in-law's sheep, that he sees a bush in flames. He stops long enough to look more closely at it and see that it's burning, yes, but it's not burning up. And as he's studying this mysterious thing, God calls to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, and he answers, as all good prophets do, here I am, here, right here, in spite of everything that I'm running from and all that I fear and all that I hope and all that I know and don't know, I am here, right here. And then God goes on to commission Moses to deliver the Israelites from Egypt, or God tries to, because Moses isn't quite so sure and Moses is quite stubborn. He argues back objecting not once, not twice, not three times, but five times at least. Their conversation stretches over two long chapters. We'll only hear a small part of it on Sunday. And it all begins, this whole call begins with God, with who God is and what God has done already and what God promises to do. I am the God of your father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, Yahweh begins. And I've seen my people's misery and heard their cry and I've come to deliver them through you. Yes, this whole call begins with and is grounded in God. But Moses kind of misses the point and asks, well, who am I that I should go? And God answers, I will be with you. God is reassuring Moses and promising to share this risk with him. And God offers Moses a sign that Israel will worship on this mountain. It's a sign for the future, a sign that will be realized in the future, to be sure. And so the sign depends on Moses trusting God first and acting on that trust first. But it's not quite enough for Moses. And he responds, I don't really know who you are. Who are you? What is your name? And again, God answers. This time, God answers with a name and instruction. I am who I am, or I will be what I will be, God answers. And because that answer could be seen as a non-answer, as a greater mystery, God adds this reminder, I, I am the God of your ancestors. In other words, Yes, I'm a mystery, and yes, you know me already. Our reading for Sunday stops there, but the dialogue continues as Moses objects again. What if they don't believe me or my experience of you? What if I start to doubt my experience of you? Can I trust you? Can I trust what's happening right now? And God answers again with three miraculous signs that demonstrate God's power. Signs that are more for Moses, I believe, than for the people. Moses's staff becomes a snake, his hand becomes leprous, and 
the Nile will turn to blood. Those are the signs. And perhaps, perhaps satisfied finally that this, this Yahweh, this God is God after all, Moses turns the conversation back again to himself, still not quite trusting God or not quite trusting himself. And he, Moses objects for a fourth time. But I'm flawed. I have weaknesses and limitations. I don't, I don't speak well. And how does God answer? How can you say that? I made you. I'm the giver of speech and I will be in your mouth and I will teach you what to speak. It's hard to argue with that, but Moses isn't done yet. He finally says point blank, perhaps what he's been angling for this whole time, please Lord, just send someone else. Can't someone else do it? Isn't there someone better? Is this really up to me? Do I really have to do this? God's growing impatient by now and understandably so, but, but God doesn't give up. And God meets Moses again, right where he is, this time agreeing to send Moses' brother Aaron with him and promising again to be with them, with the brothers. Finally, Moses has no more objections and he obeys. And I wonder today how you relate to all of these objections, to all of these questions. We all struggle with them, I believe, at some point or at various points in our lives, or perhaps all at once, all through our lives. Who am I, God, that you would call me? Who are you, God, that I can trust you? What if people don't believe me? What if I look foolish? What if I don't believe or if I start to doubt my experience of you? What will people think? What about my weaknesses, my flaws, my limitations? Do you really need me? Underneath all of these questions are deeper ones. Do you really love me, God? Do you really choose me? Do you really want me? Do you really have a purpose for me? And can I trust you? I invite you to pray with me these questions, these objections, whatever your questions, whatever your objections are, pray your worries and your wonderings. Don't give up, be just as stubborn as Moses, trusting that God is just as stubborn too and that God will not give up on you. That's prayer, that's honest relationship. That is, I believe, what grows us in relationship with God and grows us in faith. And I believe that's what God wants from us. We see that in this argument, in this ongoing dialogue between God and Moses. And what we see also in this story is a God who is just as stubborn as Moses, who hangs in there with him and has faith in him, even when he doesn't have faith in himself. We see a God who listens to him and answers him and meets him where he is. That is the God that we encounter too when we pray our questions and pray our objections and pray our worries and fears. And I invite you also to, as you're praying, listen for God's responses. Yes, God says, I love you. Yes, I choose you. Yes, it's you that I'm calling. It's you that I created. It's you that I want and need. And yes, I'll be with you. I am who I am. I will be who I will be. And you will get to know me. You will get to know who I am as we go on together. And yes, you can trust me. You can trust God, the God who created you and loves you and calls you. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom the meek are guided in judgment and light rises up in darkness for the godly. 
Grant us in all our doubts and uncertainties the grace to ask what you would have us to do, that the spirit of wisdom may save us from all false choices, and that in your light we may see light, and in your straight path may not stumble. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us in this next moment offer our prayers and intercessions for the world, for others, for ourselves, for the concerns that we carry in our hearts and minds. And now let us pray together in the words our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.